Welcome to a new episode of Melt. I'm Ritvika Gupta shooting from home. Last month, global tech company The Trade Desk formally launched its Indian operations. The Trade Desk markets a software platform used by digital ad buyers to purchase data-driven digital advertising campaigns across various ad formats and devices. To learn more, Anand Rangaswamy, editor of Melt, will be in conversation today with Tejinder Gill, general manager for The Trade Desk India. Let's get ready to Melt with Tejinder Gill. Morning, Tajinder. Good morning, Anand. How are you doing? Good, good. So, uh, welcome to India in uh, the role that you have with the Trade Desk. So, tell me, Tajinder, this is the uh, tough question because I've seen changes in media for the last 30 years, you know, from the time the first media independent was born in India, uh, which was uh, started by uh, of M.A. Bozel when they, when they started a uh, uh, joint venture with Chris Ingram. That was the first media independent. And after that, we of course, we saw Fulcrum. And then we've seen everybody come. So tell me, how are you going to be different from any offering that we see in the marketplace? Yeah, sure. Um, so Anand, uh, probably I can start with first who we are and what we do. Um, So we are a global technology company which makes platforms used by digital ad buyers, especially the advertisers and agencies, to purchase data-driven advertising campaigns in an omni-channel way. To simplify it for you, we help marketers to make smarter buying decisions in a more effective and efficient way using data and AI. That's what who we are. How we are very different from uh, from anyone else is uh, that we have four key pillars uh, around which our organization has been built. First is we are very independent. So we are only buy side. What I mean by buy side is that we solve for only advertiser objectives uh, every single day. We are not into any other business, but we are just a demand side platform. And that is our strength. Second, we are objective. We are very, we are fully transparent across our media investments. What that means is we do not own any media in the entire ecosystem. We, we give you the right impression at the right time at the right price. And that's the value we deliver to the advertisers. Third is open. Uh, by open means that we are not a walled garden. We are a marketplace and, and one of the largest marketplaces in India. Uh, third is reach. So we deliver marketers to get more reach than the walled gardens. Like this, is, this is what uh, Trade Desk is. Uh, and this makes us different uh, overall uh, from the value proposition that we are bringing to the market. So tell me, uh, Tejinder, what have you said that a Group M can't stay, say, or Lodestar can't say, or uh, you know, Madison can't say, or Denso Media can't say? What is it that you say? They also say we are uh, we are independent and we are trusted and we don't own media. These are all things all of them could have said. Definitely, and uh, so just to um, you know give you a perspective here. So we are we do not exist in isolation. We are enablers of digital technology, to put it in some simple way. We are a marketplace where digital buyers can leverage our AI and machine learning capabilities to get the best ROI from their ad dollars. See, when it comes to marketplace, I you know if you look at any advertising agency, you know there is. They, they, they serve their clients, right? They do not have a platform which brings everyone together, which means data partners, inventory partners, measurement partners, right? All of them are there and you can pick and choose uh, everything which is required for your digital ad campaign. Uh, and that actually makes us very, very different. Um, and just to give you a little flavor of what, uh, you know, I've been working on last four months, we were trying to understand the, where is the market gap. Uh, interestingly, what you have heard from marketers is, that we all know the duopoly exists for many, many years now in the digital uh, space uh, across India. Um, but what happens with the duopoly? It is all about walled gardens. Um, and why we call them as walled gardens is because they keep the data, the information, the technology, everything to themselves. And that is actually creating a lot of frustration amongst marketers. Um, they want transparency. They want to understand better about their customers. And all of this is a very, very important every day for a CMO as digital is becoming uh, the primary channel of advertising. Where we bring uh, our value and where we are trying to fill in the gap is we are creating more and more opportunities in the open internet. 
to simplify it uh, for the audience, open internet is something which is outside of walled gardens, which means we represent the fastest growing channels on internet, which is probably, you know, which can be categorized into three uh, core areas. Number one is online streaming. Second is audio. And third is online press. Uh, and, and, and I'm like, if you reflect back what probably two years ago, what was happening was all these three channels, which are growing today, the fastest are a reflection of television, radio, and newspaper, right? Uh, so that's the first gap we are trying to fill, which is creating opportunities in open internet. Uh, the second one is building a platform, which is objective, independent, and transparent. Third, which is most important is um, actually a lot of marketeers are, are working on their digital campaigns, you know, around their uh, multi-channel approach, which means you, you pick up channels, you go to an OTT player, you go to an audio player, and then you go to an online press. Uh, but what we bring to the table is you can have a universal frequency cap across all the channels, which helps you to give better insights and a single view of the customer. So rather than multi-channel approach, we are recommending uh, digital marketers to go with the omni-channel approach. So that's how uh, you know we feel there was a gap in the market and, and we are here to fulfill that gap in India. So Jinder, uh, tell me if I'm a CMO and I'm a client of Trade Desk, describe the dashboard I have in front of me when I start a new campaign. Yeah, sure. Um, if you're a CMO, Anand, um, what we need to know first from you is which are the core marketing objectives that you're trying to achieve. And then we need to drill down to the KPIs that you're trying to solve for. And this is exactly what our platform does. Uh, it, has, it has got multiple uh, components to it. The first component could actually help you know who your audience is. So we'll be going to place a pixel on your site which will help you to build your audience profile and, and who they are and what kind of personas they exist. And then we can help you build further lookalike modeling on basis of that. Uh, the second is, uh, the, and the most important thing is we are a demand side platform. What you can do is you can go ahead and pick up any combination of data partner, data partnership, uh, measurement partners, and, and stitch a campaign around. So the typical use cases I, I could say that we can solve for a CMO is, one is what are the opportunities in the growing open internet that you know, we can offer to them? The, the second is data and audience targeting, which is most important for CMOs today. Um, the third one is entire, uh, you know, ob objectivity and transparency using real-time data-driven marketing. And that has been the best thing that Indian uh, uh, CMOs are actually latching onto it. Um, and the fourth is omni-channel, which I touched upon uh, previously. Uh, the last one is around data strategy. I think after uh, third-party cookies are fading away, we are hearing a lot of queries about what the world will look, uh, look like in next uh, six to 12 months down the line. A um, lot of uh, marketers and a lot of brands have data with them. What to do with that data? What is a data strategy and how they can continue to engage with a more targeted message with the brands? So that's how it is. Um, and it's a, it's a fairly simple dashboard, which gives you real time optimization analytics, uh, which, which, which can help you optimize your campaign. So tell me, now you're sounding to me like uh, Martin Sorrell's offering as for capital. <laughs> You know, faster, better, cheaper. So, tell me if you're if that is the differentiator with the traditional media agencies. How are you different from S4 Capital? Um, so again, I would say we are not competing with a agency, right? We are a platform. So, in in this ecosystem, the, still the three players remain, which is your advertiser, agency, and publisher, and we work with all three of them very, very closely. Uh, so, we are enablers of technology for any advertiser and any agency. The only thing is we are bringing a lot more value and not a lot more data insights in a real time basis, which can help you optimize your campaigns. Uh, so, so we don't exist in isolation or we don't compete with uh, agency X versus Y. We want to make them do their job in a better way every day so that their marketers get the best value for the dollars that they're spending. And what you have realized and heard from CMOs is that if there is no transparency in the digital ecosystem, it will be going to make marketing inefficient. And once you make a marketing in inefficient, it impacts the company's growth. And it does not only impact company's growth, but it also impacts the economy in a, in a, in a long-term way. So it's very important that this entire supply chain is stitched together 
and today cfos are also getting more and more uh, you know they more they're going more deep into where these dollars are getting spent and how are they getting spent so they are not worried about let's say x amount of share is going on tv y on digital but they want to know what is working on digital and from which channels which is pushing a lot of modern age marketers to to be transparent with the with the business teams so then every word you're saying can be claimed by a group m or a lone star a madison or then so whatever they will also claim transparency they will claim efficiency they will claim that uh, they are reaching the target audience they will claim transparency they will claim all these things so, and now you're saying you want to work with them why will they work with you when they say what we're doing today is already doing what ttd does yeah sure that's a great question so if you look at uh, anand uh, i spoke about walled gardens which is typical social and search now the wor- the world outside of walled gardens is actually the fastest growing medium today a uh, indian consumer roughly spends 8 hours online which is about 70% of that time is actually getting spent on open internet and that's the fastest growing medium what we are saying is you know you've got search and social you need to continue doing that but you cannot afford to ignore the opportunities in open internet and when it comes to an agency today agency let's say wants to do a campaign on otts so they go to five players which is a hotstar they go to a z5 sony live amex player and and they actually have to manage five separate campaigns on a day to day basis what the technology that we bring to the table is we become a marketplace for them which is very independent you don't need to go to anyone and you can actually do apply all the data and and layering and intelligence in a single dashboard when you are buying campaign there so we could be your one stop solution uh for for all your digital uh, media buying needs so tell me where does your money come from who pays uh, you yeah uh, sure. you know because <laughs> finally there's an absolute amount of money which a marketer is used to spending uh every day he wakes up or she wakes up trying to figure out how to reduce the amount of money and one more element in the mix means uh, there's an outgo by somebody so who pays you so uh, since we are a dsp and we are only a dsp we only charge a platform fee and that's the way we make money that's how the company runs globally uh, interestingly what uh, the inputs that we have got from a lot of our global partners uh, who advertise with us day in and out they're always very focused on transparency so let's say if you have 100 dollars as a marketer to spend CMOs are getting very cautious on where that hundred dollars is getting spent. Uh, you know, I'm sure you would have read a uh, lot of news and article probably in last two years where CMOs are getting worried about you know if they give hundred dollars as media to to any partner, not the entire hundred goes to the media. Right? It is X percentage of that which goes to media. The rest goes to the channel partners. Where we are bringing transparency is let's say you park hundred dollars, we give you. exact break up on how many cents actually went for a measurement how many went for a data partner how many went for a audience partner how many went as a platform fee and that transparency is uh, giving us a, a, a great uh, engagement with our uh, customers across the globe you still haven't answered my question which is who pays you where does that fee come from it comes from advertisers so it is an addition to the money is already spending however small that might be you know let's say even if a uh, if a advertiser spends a single digit money on us but the kind of savings and the value we are able to deliver is much much higher and it's a big multiplier of that cost so this is where uh, advertisers feel in a long term that roi is is much better uh, because because the kind of algorithms that we have helps you to save a lot on your media cost i can give you a simple example let's say you want to buy a impression on a certain um, ott player uh but when you run it through trade desk our algorithms go into the open world and try to find the same user on a open auction on a auction environment uh, so that we can uh, you can get a impression at a lower value uh, and that's the saving that we bring to the table by our intelligence by our ai and machine learning algorithms so eventually you you definitely pay for the services that you are taking which is a platform fee but overall on your media budgets we help you save a lot more value uh, we are able to deliver you actually a lot more value so tejinder uh, you know i am cynical about anything that the marketer has to pay new because i've seen this over the years you know we've had uh, say a company like special access 
who uh, you know offered to uh, prove it efficiency or inefficiency for a fee and the question was where does that money come from because you know you spoke about low single digit fees and the business is already a low single digit fee business so if you add even a 1% that's uh, you know to a large advertiser that's a large amount of absolute money so uh, uh, have you got a few clients on board have you got a few agencies on board yes uh, anand and probably we can reflect back a little bit right uh, 10 years ago when i joined uh, linkedin um, social media was just popping up uh, uh, and and people were very reluctant on entire ugc piece uh, which was getting uh, where, where they were very concerned about positioning their uh, content or a brand right next to a ugc uh, over the period it evolved uh, four and a half years ago when i joined uh, true color and i started the programmatic uh, journey there uh and and we again started charging uh, around the platform fee that was a new world like you know a lot of marketers were very reluctant as you rightly said about paying any incremental dollars but then over a period of time they have actually found a lot more value in giving that small amount of money which delivers a lot more value and saves a lot more time for them uh now 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 coming back to uh, to the to the question uh, that you're talking about that who has par- partnered with us so all five large holding uh, holding groups across agencies starting from wpp uh, to uh, to adensu to ipg to publicis uh, and omg like everyone is on board uh, and lot of these relationships are like local relationships um, and interestingly we have got big cpg clients like nestle gsk right they are already collaborating and have started using the platform at a scalable uh, uh, in a scalable way um, so yes uh, people have welcomed us with both arms open and and the core value proposition was that hey we have now got something which is much bigger than just search and social which is actually open internet right so t- tell me uh, forget about india for the moment go to your parent company your head office and tell me what are the success stories you have in terms of long term uh, permanent uh, semi permanent relationships yes uh, and i have a one line answer for you like 90% of our customers come back to us year on year again and again right so we have a retention rate of 90% globally across advertisers which speaks that you know once a cl- client starts using our platform they stay engaged and they continue to keep growing the relationship so starting from the west to the east uh, everyone is using it and we are growing uh, at a phenomenal pace year on year so who are the biggest beneficiaries of signing on with ttd is it the largest advertisers the medium advertisers or the or really really small advertisers of which there are hundreds of thousands in india yes coming back to the key verticals that we have so i'll call categorize them as efg e for entertainment f is for fmcg and g for gaming like these are the three verticals where we seeing the maximum engagement in india right now um and and you know cpg and fmcg is more a global trend where some of the largest brands uh, who have huge media budgets are very keen to partner with trade desk and that are, that is that trend is continuing in india as well but entertainment and gaming is uh, is is very new to us in india so uh, do small advertisers benefit at all say an advertiser with a budget of you know 2 crores 3 crores a year do they have any benefit by uh, using your platform i would say yes definitely right because they care about roi the most right if you're working on a, for if you're you know running a startup uh, marketing is one of the biggest uh, line items in your pnl and you want to optimize it and a lot of the young emerging companies are starting with digital only and where they are heading is actually programmatic only and when it comes to programmatic uh, we, we we have a great expertise and one of the most sophisticated platforms so definitely the platform is meant for you know the entire range of advertisers starting from uh, the, the large ones to a small uh, advertiser with 2 to 3 crores of a budget annually um and we have both managed service and self serve model which can help them to uh to either build their teams locally and and uh, run the platform by themselves or they can we are happy to assist them um you know 24 by 7 wherever they are in the country right to close this conversation tell me how are, how are people going to know you exist in india what is your marketing 
what is your announcement uh, in the next phase yeah definitely so interestingly we have done the launch on 16th of june uh, and we have seen a fantastic engagement from a lot of brands and marketers have reached out to us and they want to know more about the platform um and and that's one part of it the second one is we have a great engagement plan for next 3 years through pr and marketing um you know which will create the buzz in the ecosystem uh, so that we can deliver uh, the value of the platform and make make the audiences more aware uh, about the trade desk capabilities uh, the third one is uh, which is very important close to my heart is we want to upskill the technology uh, talent pool in india and we have launched our trade desk edge academy interestingly 40% of the edge academy participants are from india so we are already seeing a huge amount of um, you know pull uh from the tech talent uh, so that we can help them enhance their uh, their skills for the for the next uh, age roles in the country and probably the fourth one is we are already collaborating with some of the large uh, associations across our digital ecosystem um and trying to partner with them to evangelize the trade desk platform um, you know in in, in india so Thank those you. are some of the few things that we are doing right now and to scale and finally of course you are talking to melt and uh, you're putting the word across yeah thank you you guys a great platform and uh, across the globe so i'm looking forward uh, you know how 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 we can scale it further uh, with your collaboration thank you tejender perfect thanks and that was tejender gill sharing the trade desk india's growth strategy and what it brings to the table for marketers he is presenting the mel cheat sheet Open internet will give marketers more transparency and the ability to understand customers better. Marketers need to develop a data strategy in order to create targeted messages for brands. Digital marketers need to adopt an omni-channel approach. With that it's a wrap on this episode of Melt. Do follow us on social media. Our handle is ready to melt. And stay updated with all that's happening in the world of advertising and marketing with our daily Melt update on our website readytomelt.com. I shall see you next week. Goodbye.